So, um, hi everybody. I'm really glad that you are all here. Um, my name is Sibiryakov Alexander, and I will be talking about search quality in practice. So, uh, here's the agenda of my talk. Um, please show me the hands who knows what Yandex is. Wow. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, Yandex is the biggest uh, search engine in Russia. It's like Google. Uh, and uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't have a slide about uh, my, my previous experience, but uh, I will just say it. So, uh, I was working five years in the Department of Search Quality in Yandex. Uh, and my talk today will be about um, what kind of problems uh, do exist with search quality. What is it? and also about how to improve the things without investing too much resources. Um, so, first we will talk about what is search quality, then we will take a look about uh, examples of search quality problems, uh, then I will describe three methods of how to evaluate the information retrieval systems, then we will have a look at the signals, I have some like a bunch of signals for your inspiration. And uh, finally, we will take a look about how to produce good snippets if we will have time. Yeah, so let's go. Um, first of all, search quality is an abstract term. Uh, it includes user experience, relevance, and reveals the role effectiveness of search by humans. At the same time, relevance uh, is a measure of conformity of user information need. Uh, the document found. So, basically, when user wants to find something, uh, he starts with his intent. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, when I first get the Hadoop, I faced that uh, streaming jobs are breaking when uh, the, the code in the streaming map is uh, throwing uh, non-zero exit code. So I started to Google it. My intent was to solve my problem, uh, how to disable crashing of streaming of non-zero exit code. So uh, we see first two results. They are about Hadoop and they are about uh, non-zero exit code. So it looks like a relevant. Yeah, but the second two is completely out of sense. You know, so, um, and you also see that the highlighting shows that words are distinct, so it means like nothing useful is found. So the question, why am I see this here? So, hmm, uh, about search. Um, uh, with search we have uh, quite a bunch of problems. For example, search has no definite formulation and it also has a considerable uncertainty. What does it mean? For example, it's, it's not possible to define a search, uh, for example, like an ERP system or internet banking application. It's a complex thing, thing because it's work, it is working with uh, na queries written in natural language and it also works with documents written in natural language, which is kind of irrational, hard to formulate, uh, formalize. Um, also, uh, search, uh, with search uh, working real users, uh, whose behavior is very hard to somehow explain or also formalize. Um, uh, and also they have a kind of unexplainable and not predictable needs, always. Uh, usually, uh, mm, okay. <laughs> so, uh, also, uh, we developers are not prepared to tackle the search. We cannot manage high tech, step changing, cross functional, and user centered challenge. Uh, of course, if we are not Google. So, what, what am I talking about? Uh, to build a good search system, we need to know uh, knowledge from different domains. For example, how to build high performance system. Um, the second thing is linguistics. Uh, so, we have to understand how morphology works, how post tagging works, how syntax is, and so on. Also, we have to know how, how machine learning works. And finally, we need to have some knowledge about the domain. You know, if we are searching for financial documents, we have to know something about financial stuff. 
Yeah, so uh, also the role of search and user experience is underestimated. Therefore, nobody measuring knows how good is it. This is true, especially for uh, open source world, where everybody just downloads uh, the archive, installs it, and that's it. Job is done. And so here's how it looks like. Um, basically, um, this is a big elephant in a relatively small room. Somebody is guessing that it is there, but nobody sees it, and nobody knows how exactly it looks like. So this is how it comes um, from emotional perspective of the users. So um, if user is pessimistic uh, at the beginning, uh, it could end up um, well, with bad user experience and finally defeating and abandoning for a phone and email. So search will simply not work. Uh, it could be all other way. Search could be a, an interesting source of discoveries and uh, finally user will end up with satisfaction and using it again and again. So let's take a look closer to, at examples of the problems. Um, these examples are for big search systems like Google. You can try it. But um, uh, these uh, examples, uh, these kind of problems, they are all, also persist in Lucene world and its ecosystem. So first thing is uh, searching of model numbers and articles. So uh, you see these two queries. Uh, 61, 67, and so on. Uh, this is an article for a telescopic nozzle for BMW 3 Series. Uh, the difference is the placement of spaces. And uh, for the second query, uh, you will get much more broader and interesting response of the search system than for the first one. So basically, uh, if you are a typical user and you don't know how search system works, you will not get it, you know, because uh, user will simply abandon the search. And uh, at the same time, search system itself knows much more better uh, for which kind of query, for which placement of spaces, uh, it has a better results. Uh, second question is detection and correction of typing errors. Um, this is uh, kind of Interesting thing. Uh, this is a Czech language, and I'm searching for a SOAP holder well, in your bathroom. And uh, these uh, differences in these queries are uh, in one word, in, the, in one letter, in the second word. And the difference, uh, the thing here, that first query was not corrected. Uh, why? Because uh, the second word, Mila, uh, is, means to wash. You know, so basically this is the right word, the right form, but of a different word. So we have two different words, and they, that way we are ending with lexical ambiguity. So search system simply has nothing to do with it. Um, the only way to solve it is to take into account the previous history of the queries, or to take into account the surroundings of the query, uh, the surrounding words. So, first uh, example is the question search. Uh, for example, um, for some reason, uh, Google uh, is um, completely forgetting about what am I searching for when I'm searching how to buy a used Xperia. Xperia is a Sony Ericsson mobile phone model name. Yeah, so uh, he's starting uh, to give me some results about um, how to buy used things. But the most important word in this query is Xperia. If you change it on how to buy a used smartphone, it works OK. So it means like uh, it has a different weighting of important words. Uh, and sometimes it's wrong. There are also fundamental problems. For example, stupid query, yeah? Berlin buy tomatoes. Where can I buy tomatoes in the big city? So, uh, and Google actually found funeral in Berlin. <laughs> so, total fail, you know? So, uh, the thing here is uh, when you are um, 
we, when we are putting search on our website, we are always presuming, assuming that our users have understanding of what they can search and what they could found. Yeah, but this is not always true. Yeah, so try to figure out uh, if there was a zero given result, what user was found. And you probably will be inspired a lot. What do they find, try to find? Uh, this is a, another example. Says um, example of bad user experience. So, says uh, CZ, anybody knows what says CZ? Uh huh. Yeah, only a few people. Says CZ is a uh, uh, Czech search system, and uh, only four countries in the world has its own search technology, and Czech Republic is there. So, Russians, Czechs, uh, China, Baidu, Koreans, and Rest is the Google. So uh, uh, this is a check search system, and they tried, uh, experimented with this new user interface. What they did, they put a big snapshots of the website. And so <clears throat> as a result, what they have, um, uh, because of big snapshots, which are giving not so much in useful information, uh, it has big, bad user experience. Also, order is not clear. You know, which result is better by means of search system? Right one or left one? Hard to say. Also, half of a page is spent on advertisement and on the domain auto CZ. So, basically, if you have such problems with interface, well, it could be not surprising that users will not use your search uh, too much. Um, here's uh, examples of uh, Russian uh, web interface. So if you are waiting too long for a loading of additional page, you also could conclude that uh, results uh, are not so great and uh, abandon the search. Okay, so let's talk about evaluation. <coughs> Um, so, uh, evaluation is basement for improvement of uh, the relevance. Uh, at the same time, there is uh, no ideal measure, and it's much more better to consult different measures when you are making a decision. But each measure has its own properties, so you have to think about it. Yeah. Uh, if it shows something wrong, it doesn't have to be something wrong. Uh, also, uh, evaluation of search could be done using click behavior of your users so, uh, or other interaction behavior if you have it. So basically, uh, recording of the logs is a must. So relevance is subjective. Um, why? Because of the context of the problem user tr is trying to solve. For example, uh, if I would like to move from point A to B, and I'm searching for a taxi. So uh, search system looks at it, okay, he wants taxi. So I will show him the best website about the taxi. So basically, uh, the search system lacks of the context of the problem and uh, simply will not give me a relevant result I need. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is awareness about the problem. So if you are... Um, interested, for example, in the conflict on Ukraine. And uh, you would like to know what is uh, the last news. So you are entering the query last news in the, at the Ukraine. And if search system will not give you uh, nothing new from your perspective, you could conclude that relevance is bad for this query and, um, and so on. So also user interface could affect decisions about user uh, about relevance. Uh, bad document annotations, it was uh, shown on the previous uh, slide, that uh, could, uh, could lead also to decision of bad relevance. Uh, presentation form and previous experience with this search system, which is uh, very important because, uh, for example, uh, some search systems uh, has its own properties like 
uh, Yandex Russian search system works not so well for uh, developers' queries. I mean, software development. And uh, CZ is uh, works also badly for, uh, uh, for um, English queries and so on. So uh, we will talk, talk about three methods, query by query comparison of two systems, classic Cleverdon's Cranfield, and pairwise evaluation, uh, that one is experimental. So query by query comparison. If you have two search systems uh, and you want to compare them, um, you can, uh, this method works only if uh, the search results do differ significantly. Yeah, for minor changes, it doesn't work. So if you take 100 of the queries, then query each system and evaluate the whole SERP search engine's results page uh, for top end results with, uh, with one judgment. Yeah, the scale is simple. Good, very good, bad, very bad. So, and then count judgments of each type. So here I evaluated two queries uh, for Berlin buzzwords and Java byte output stream. And uh, I see, you see there that Google is, uh, has a very good, uh, Bing is kind of uh, good. And uh, finally, there is a summary. We see that Google is better because it has uh, two, one for very good and, and one for good, and Bing has one for good and one for bad. So, of course, numbers will be much more higher when you evaluate 100 queries. And that way you can make decision. You can apply it, for example, if you have uh, the same search engine uh, but different uh, search databases, or you can uh, apply it if you have the same search database but different engines when you are testing which ranking is better. Or if you are changing uh, the similarity model, you can also test it by that approach. Here's uh, the side of Cleverdon. He's a British librarian, and he's best known for his work on the evaluation information retrieval system. That guy is responsible for um, uh, the classic approach, uh, which is heavily used in all major search systems, uh, like Google, Bing, and Yandex. So he's also responsible for um, uh, he proved that uh, uh, usage of a flexible uh, terms list uh, in the index bringing more quality than the fixed lexicon. It wasn't clear before. So what components it has? Uh, document collection, set of queries, and then set of relevance judgments. So, uh, and then measures. Uh, precision uh, is a fraction of retrieved documents that are relevant and recall. Percent of all relevant documents returned by the search system. So, uh, recall is a kind of thing uh, which is very hard to measure because you need to know uh, how much relevant documents is in your collection, which is very hard to judge manually because collections are big. Uh, usually. So this is an example. Uh, for a query Berlin buzzwords, we have seven documents, and here is a judgment. Relevant is relevant, and R is not relevant. So, and finally, we calculate measures. So precision is about 71%. We simply divide uh, count of relevance on overall count. And recall is not shown because when you are working with a web scale collection, you never know uh, how many relevant results the results do exist. So, um, when you are uh, evaluating uh, many queries, then you have to somehow calculate the final measure. There are two ways: uh, you can do micro averaging and micro averaging. Um, the difference here is: imagine you have uh, three classes of queries. Queries with good precision, queries with bad precision, and queries with um, average precision. Uh, so, uh, simply micro average will, uh, will reflect uh, the class which represents the majority. You know, if you want to know something about how it behaves on uh, less popular classes, you have to use macro average. There are also variations of this measure, uh, which is uh, working only counting for top five or for 10 results, and they call precision one, precision five, or precision 10. Uh, another measure uh, is uh, 
uh, well known uh, in the information retrieval community uh, on all learning to run challenges. Uh, it's called uh, normalized discounted cumulative gain, and it measures usefulness or gain of document based on its position in the result list. So. Uh, the gain is accumulated from the top of a result list to the bottom with the gain of each result discounted at lower ranks. In the formula of DCG, you see the denominator. And in the denominator, we have I, the position number. So uh, basically, the denominator does the discounting. Uh, so the core difference of this measure from precision is uh, that this measure takes into account the position where document was marked as relevant. For example, precision, uh, if you have two queries, for a first query you have rele relevant at the bottom, for the, for the second query uh, of the bottom of the list, and for the second query you have at the top of the list relevance. For precision, then it will be the same. But this measure will reflect the difference in the positions. So, in order to calculate normalized discounted cumulative gain, you have to calculate IDCG, which is for ideal ranking. And uh, this is done by simply sorting uh, the results of your evaluated uh, query by relevance, putting relevant on top. That way you will get uh, ideal ranking, and uh, you can calculate IDCG that way by the same formula. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, here's the pairwise evaluation uh, with this tournament system. Um, I guess the most complex thing in this talk. So, um, first of all, uh, this, uh, this kind of method is uh, true, is working for document pairs. So you're not judging the whole query, you're judging the document pairs for it. Uh, simply you have to answer the, each time the simple, the simple answer. Which document is more relevant to the query X? And then you can uh, say left, right, or equal. Yeah, so if you say left, left one will get one point. If you say right, right one will get one point. Equal, both will get by one point. So, chosen document is getting, well, okay, <laughs> I already said it. So, uh, the tricky thing here is the preparation of the pairs. Uh, here's a complex uh, uh, scheme about it. So let's think we started with initial uh, set, no ranking at all. Uh, so we, we are randomly shuffling it yeah, and dividing uh, on two parts. Uh, and then doing the first pass. So in the first pass, um, you have to compare first from the first half and first from the second half and so on. So second from the first half, second uh, from the second half. Uh, you see it on the table on, uh, in the right. Uh, then you have the results of the first pass. Uh, so d4, d6, d2, d1 got by one point. Uh, doing the same for them. So only winners will participate in the next pass. So in the second pass, we are comparing d, d4 vers versus d2 and d6 versus d1. Uh, so d2 and d1 uh, taken by one point and uh, go into the third pass. Third pass is, uh, needs one click, so <coughs> third pass will get uh, D1. And at the same, and now we see the final ranking by the points. So D1 got the three point, D2 two points, D4 and D6 by one point. So, um, uh, pairwise evaluation uh, with this system uh, takes about 10 judgments, maximum 19, yeah, for 10 documents retrieved for one query. Uh, why am I proposing this? Because it is much more cheaper to click uh, for two documents, uh, to, to judge only two documents, than to judge the whole top, uh, top 10. Because, um, because usually when you're doing judgments, you need uh, to make it in some reliable way. Because if two different people will make judgments, it's quite likely that they will not agree. So the agreement between two judges uh, using pairwise evaluation is much more easier to get than uh, for classic approach. 
Uh, so this is kind of a cheap, repla cheap, cheap replacement of a classic approach. Uh, after judgment is finished, the ranking is built by Gefford points, and according to position, the weights are assigned to the documents. <coughs> and then using weights, the machine learned model can be trained. Or you can calculate NDCG. NDCG is perfectly fit uh, into this model. Uh, so here's a... Uh, example of how weights could be assigned. Uh, basically, I'm getting, I'm giving more weight to the first documents than to the last. So signals. Uh, here's a sm small agenda of this part. Uh, the text relevance uh, has a diversity of tasks, and uh, usage of many signals, including query classifiers, is the only way. And also production system, if we have it, what data we have available, uh, social signals, and uh, if we have some integration with social media or we have um, uh, some components of a, of a social, uh, social networks included on your website. Uh, and finally, how to mix the signals. Uh, simple manual linear model or uh, the most advanced uh, a state of art technique gradient boosted decision trees. So, uh, diversity of tasks. Uh, for example, if we have a phrase search, phrase search is a, when you are, have a long sequence of words and you want to find it exactly matching. Yeah, this is called a phrase search. Uh, search for named entities like cities, names, uh, search for of codes, articles, telephone numbers, search of equations, search of set expressions. Uh, all these types of queries uh, having differences. For example, they are different in length, uh, they are different in uh, term frequency distributions, uh, they are different in IDFs. Anybody knows what IDF is? Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, IDF is an inverted document frequency. Uh, it is calculated for, for the whole search collection. Um, so, um, basically, uh, it's uh, very hard for a one model uh, to work well on all types of these queries. So, the solution is many signals. So. Uh, first thing is uh, query type detection. So we can build a simple rules or classifiers to somehow detect the query type yeah, and then use it as a signal. Uh, then we can calculate BM25AF uh, zoned version. Uh, usually all HTML documents has a meta description, meta keywords field. So uh, we can calculate, especially for this field, a BM25. We can calculate BM25 on query expansions. So we can expand existing query uh, using word forms. Uh, we can expand it using thesaurus. <coughs> we can expand it using abbreviations, translate, uh, and fragments. Um, uh, we can also uh, use uh, uh, properties of distribution of count of subsequent query words found in the document. Uh, we can use the same thing for a query order, uh, the same thing uh, for a distance, plus, minus, three, one to three words, and so on. Uh, we can also build a language model of document and use it for ranking. Uh, or we can build a language model for a query. A language model is simply a dictionary uh, of words. Uh, this is language model order, uh, language model of first order, uh, connected with a frequencies, uh, with a probabilities of of appearing of these words, and these probabilities can be used as a signals. Uh, so here is a simple example of how we can mix uh, the signals. <clears throat> so A B C D can be estimated manually or it, they can be estimated using relevance judgments. Uh, so, okay, if we, we have production system, so what does it mean? Uh, it means that we have a real search and uh, users are making queries there and uh, they are clicking results. <coughs> so it means uh, that we can record this data process it in the background or in real time if you can afford it. And then 
ex uh, extract uh, signals from it and use it in ranking. This is actually how do all big search systems works, like Google, Bing, Yandex. So, uh, first of us, <coughs> there will be, uh, I will just count examples of uh, possible uh, features we could get from, uh, from clicks. Uh, so for documents, we can get a click-through rate of a document. Click-through rate is a count of clicks divided on the count of shows. Uh, we can get absolute number of clicks, uh, count of times when document was clicked first in search engines results page, uh, the same time when it was clicked last, uh, count of clicks on the same search engines results page before after the document was clicked. Uh, so uh, then, we can get some features for our shows. For example, count of times when document was displayed on search engine's results page. Uh, <clears throat> so, is it popular or not? Count of unique queries where document was displayed. If we are finding one document for a mini queries, it means something. Uh, perhaps it contains a lot of uh, diverse information. Um, and we should show it more. Uh, for example, document position uh, properties, uh, uh, distribution properties, uh, where do we show this document in average, on what position? <coughs> um, for queries, uh, we can collect, uh, for example, absolute click count on query. Is this query clickable at all? Is this kind of a successful query? Uh, uh, we can collect abandonment rate. Yeah, so uh, how many times uh, user enters the query and then abandon the search at all. Um, CTR of the query, uh, time spent on search engines results page. So if users are looking something in this, uh, well, looking for a long time on this query, it means uh, that there is something to look. <laughs> so uh, time spent till first, last click. So. Uh, is results accessible on this query or not? Uh, query frequency, uh, count of words in the query. <clears throat> Finally, count of query reformulations. Reformulation uh, is when you have a subsequent queries, but you have a changes only in one word or two words. Yeah, so user is doing the same query, changing one word, just looking for something. Yeah, try, trying to, uh, to feed the search system. Yeah, so this kind of uh, stuff is very important. And uh, we also can count of how much there was a query reformulations for this query and CTR of these reformulations. <coughs> um, if we have some integration with social media or we have uh, some parts of social media in, on our website. We can uh, use count of readers, commenters of the content. We can also um, count the comments published during some time period. This is uh, velocity, so how uh, the speed growth. <coughs> we can uh, count time since last comment. We can also count uh, speed of likes growth. Uh, we can count how much time was since last like, and so on. Uh, how to mix the signals. There is a well-known uh, problem in machine learning called learning to rank. So uh, basically, this is the application of machine learning uh, studying how to construct the good ranking model. There are some uh, learning to rank challenges, for example, Yahoo learning to rank challenge, where they are just giving them, uh, to participants, uh, the judged data set and they create models for this data set and then measure somehow uh, which model is better, whose mod model is better. <clears throat> so this is a, a full-scale process, how it is done in big search systems like Google, Bing, Yandex. Uh, first, they, they do prepare training set. So they prepare documents, queries, and relevance judgments, and they renew this. So uh, they renew, adding new documents, adding new queries, and uh, um, uh, renewing relevance judgments because uh, it could happen that uh, for some reason the document was uh, relevant and now it is not. 
Um, then they have a framework. If you have a distributed search system on many machines, uh, you need a way how to get the feature vectors for your machine learning. Uh, it means uh, it could be not so easy to do if you, uh, if you have it distributed. Uh, uh, then they do learning mode of the model, so it means they have some implementation of, uh, um, how to say it, uh, some implementation for learning algorithm, and they do use it. Uh, then they do evaluation, for example, they have uh, A-B testing, uh, where they can compare 50 to 50 percent, <coughs> uh, which ranking is better. If the previous ranking is better, they can relearn the model and so on. And they do repetition of all that stuff. Because uh, internet is changing, so features are also changing. So from time to time, model uh, uh, model degrades. Mm -hmm. How to mix signals? Do it yourself way. So we can do it easier. Uh, well, we can try to do it cheaper, more indie way. So we can choose manually some set of features, uh, which we think are good predictors. And then we can create a simple linear model. This is an example. And uh, here, uh, uh, the coefficients need to be fit. So we can take 10 representative queries, spend one hour, and fit them manually. This is better than nothing. Of course, this is a dumb approach, but it works. It works somehow. So. Uh, gradient boosted decision trees um, here um, basically is the state of art method. Uh, if you want to mix them, if you have relevance judgments, uh, you can use uh, this uh, kind of algorithm to mix uh, these signals. <coughs> uh, so, uh, do we have time? One minute. So, um, here's the a uh, small explanation of uh, how gradient boosted decision tree is working. This is simply uh, an, an, an ensemble of the small trees, not so deep. So basically, uh, each tree is learned on the subsample of a whole training set. It means, it means that you, it will learn the all nuances of your uh, tra training set that way. Because it, they, be, they, be, they are becoming more, uh, more like more important when you are working with subsample, um, and then uh, it adds uh, the result of each decision tree uh, on each iteration. So there could be thousands of these trees. <coughs> so you see, there are a learning to rank challenge of Yahoo, and uh, we can see the expected reciprocal rank and normalized DCG. Uh, of comparison. So, as we see, gradient boosted decision trees is the best by all measures, and uh, the difference in the second digit after the comma is the most important one. Um, so, uh, um, these results are of, G of GBDT is the showing great difference between uh, BM25F and GBDT. Rank SVM is ranking SVM, and BM25F is one feature, text feature. Uh, below you see that they used a pretty big data set, like 20,000 of queries uh, and for training, and about 7,000 for testing, which is a lot. So okay, we have no time for snippets, but presentation will be published. If you are interested, uh, you can download it and read it. Thank you. Great, uh, thanks. Maybe we have time for one quick, really good question. So who wants Sorry. to take the time? No one wants to ask the question? So I have a question. Uh, most of your optimization is carried out for NDCG, right? Mm -hmm. Do you look at other metrics like uh, diversity, like intralist diversity, or how popular are the websites you show, and things like that, other properties beyond pure uh, accuracy? Um. I did not hear you well, unfortunately. Do you look more properties besides NDCG and accuracy? Do you look at things like diversity in the list or, or how popular are the results you're showing? Because then I guess 
you might fall into the filter bubble and not allow users to discover new content, maybe. <laughs> so it's a complicated question. Yeah. Sorry for that. I really don't, don't, don't hear oh, bad okay. speakers. Maybe we can take it from outside, it's better. Yeah, yeah I, I will definitely answer you. Like. Sure, great. Well, uh, thank you very much again. <laughs>